All right, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about net versus growth when it comes to real estate investing. And then I'm going to talk about the two types of real estate investors, capital growth and cash flow investors, and why you need to know these two differences if you want to learn about what real estate investing is all about. Hey, Jeff Koga here, and so let me talk about something called uh, net versus growth, the truth about real estate investing, right? And the reason why I decided to do this, it dawned on me where when I was at the coffee shop that I go to every morning, they had their, uh, kind of their projections for the week, okay? So randomly, they just had it like on a binder, right? They're, they had it on the counter, and they had it open. They had their projection on how much a coffee shop, this particular coffee shop, makes, um, as well as like the past week, and then as well as their projection for uh, this week. And it's a small little coffee shop, right? Coffee bean to be exact, and uh, um, it said on there that uh, total for this week that they're projecting to make in terms of sales is uh, a little over $16,000 in selling coffee. So if we just round down and call it 15,000 per week, right? So we're talking about every two weeks, that's 30,000. And if we do a month, 30 times two, it's four weeks in a, a year, we're looking at about $60,000 uh, that we're talking about here in this little dinky little coffee shop. Now. Here's where a lot of times people uh, come into challenges because I'm a firm believer that I think in the next 12 to 18 months, uh, we're gonna hear a lot more uh, about the real estate market and uh, uh, you're gonna hear a lot more news on why it's good or why it's bad. And you're gonna hear a lot of people, I think that's gonna hop into the real estate investing world. And uh, I figure I talk about this because there's a misconception in this industry that I'm part of and which all has to do with the revenue Revenue versus growth or net versus growth now what is the difference between net versus gross now gross for the folks that are not aware right like if you work in uh, corporate America or job and you get a paycheck every single you know week or bi-weekly or salary whatever it is right you get that paycheck and then in that paycheck the amount that you're supposed to get it being two thousand five thousand ten thousand whatever that paycheck is then afterwards right FICA FICA um, which is the actual taxes you prepay get subtracted then you have your actual amount that uh, you're gonna get that's gonna be deposited directly deposit into your uh, banking if you have direct deposit and or uh, check that they're gonna cut to you okay so that's the difference between gross and net and then the kind of the joke is that after uh, Uncle Sam takes his cut the gross turns into net but the net is actually gross right it's kind of a lame joke that uh, we say so why am I telling you this in the space of real estate investing okay is that a lot of times people claim about big dollars that are being made in the world of investing now don't get me wrong Okay, it's one of the oldest uh, business that has been around, and uh, number one way to uh, create wealth or grow wealth is in real estate, right? Multimillionaires uh, that I know of has either used real estate to grow their wealth and or to uh, start their legacy of uh, generating wealth in the space of real estate. Okay, so it's going to be around. Why? Is because the inherent need of shelter has been around since uh, you know since uh you know roman empire days and even before that right so again shelter and food right those are some of the basic human necessities that are around and it's going to be around so with that being said you're going to see a lot more of people saying hey become a real estate investor but I want to talk about the two types of investors that are out there. And these two types of investors, their strategies and their approach that they take is going to make a world of a difference on how much you net and or how much you gross, okay? 
Now, what are the two types of uh, real estate investors out there, okay? The first type is I like to call capital growth investors because the term investor is so broad and people will use it interchangeably when in reality, you're not a investor but more of a capital growth operator in this space of real estate. And I know it may sound like I'm, I'm talking about semantics here, but it's really important to understand because a capital growth investor is looking for making big chunks of cash fast, right? Big chunks of cash fast. And these strategies is different than the second type of investors, which is a cash flow investor. All right, so again, two types. You have our capital growth investors, and then you have cash flow growth investors. All right, two different approaches, two different strategies. Now, many times when it comes to like HDTV and they talk about flip this house or any type of reality TV show that's tied into real estate investing and or quote flipping, it falls under the actual what capital growth side investors why is it because they're taking an underperforming asset right like real estate and then making it by using some type of construction and or using it to change a strategy to disposition the property so that way they can actually make more all right so so for example right like rehabbing right buying an ugly house fixing it up and selling it that's a capital growth stra uh, strategy now what's another capital growth strategy is uh, if you get a property, all right, discounted, and uh, you get it under contract, and then you take that contractual right and or the equitable interest in that contract and sell it uh, for a profit, all right, that's called wholesaling. That is, guess what, a capital growth uh, investing strategy, okay, meaning that you're gonna make chunks of cash fast, okay, all right, and that's a capital growth strategy. So that's investor type number one, all right, and then the second Second type is cash flow investor, right? Now, what is a cash flow investor? Cash flow investor is looking for income stream, meaning that they want to acquire an asset, in this case, obviously real estate, and be able to create income. Now, why is income important to that individual? Is because they know that if you can get income every single month, then you're technically financially free, especially if your income covers your expenses. All right, and these are totally different strategies when it comes to investing in real estate. And what I tell individuals is this: is that if you have a decent paying uh, job, is I say reconsider um, how you're looking at investing. Okay, because a lot of times people see, hey, you know what? Oh my gosh, you know what? You can do a capital growth strategy like buying a house, you know, fixing it up and flipping and make oh my gosh, fifty grand, right? Because that's how everyone talks about. But in reality, what they're not realizing is that's typically the gross revenue. Uh, that they're bringing in, not the net. All right, it's a gross. It's like that paycheck you get, um, but then your you know FICA FICA is not taken out. And in this case, the expense for capital growth investors, they're typically cost of money, a uh, holding cost, right? Miscellaneous costs that people are not aware of. But when people are pushing, kind of like you know, like the HDTV flip this house, right? They're talking about typically gross revenue versus a uh, hard cost. Like if you watch the show, they never talk about the cost of money. All right, and majority of these individuals are actually leveraging money. They're actually borrowing money from investors and paying out returns. Now, why do I know that? Is because I know some of the people that have been on the show. I've been actually approached to get on the show uh, myself years ago, and I just happened to say no to it because they didn't want to give me the creative control. Right, I was just like, hey, I want creative control and actually tell the story on things like gross and net. And they're just like, that's not fun. People don't want to see it. I said, look, then if that's the case, I don't want to lie about what's going on. But a lot of these shows that are on TV with the capital growth investing strategy of buying, fixing, and flipping houses, that's what they have. And then on top of that, a lot of these people that are on the show, they only get paid like a thousand dollars per show or something like that, or two thousand dollars per show. Right? People think that they're balling out of control on that, but not necessarily. Right? And a lot. Of their margins are skewed because what they're doing is they're pitching um, like contractors and suppliers for the house uh, and telling them says hey by the way do you want to get promoted on this uh, nationally televised show and they'll be like yeah of course and they'll be like hey well give us the product for free or near cost 
all right? And that's kind of the, the position that they take. And, and again, how do I know this is because when I was doing uh, importing construction materials in terms of like, hey, finishes, I've been approached by people that were on the show, very popular guys. They basically hit me up and says, hey, Jeff, I know that your guys are bringing these types of finishes in. Would you want to get your company televised nationally? I was like, yeah. So what's in it for you? He's like, well, you got to make sure you give me a great deal on these construction materials. And and you start running the numbers. I was like, nah, man, it's not, it's not good. Now, looking back now, maybe it was a good deal. I don't know. But the point is that that's what happens. So when they say, hey, construction is X amount of dollars, typically they're putting in the actual cost of what it really costs to them. Okay. So going back to the two types of investors understand this because again if you have a decent paying job and you have that I highly encourage individuals to uh, go after cash flow right cash flow versus going after uh, uh, going after uh, capital growth right because one is capital growth is really labor intensive in terms of what you have to learn how to do and then cash flow is going to allow you to actually create a lot more wealth like mine I've Probably have been involved in over a thousand transactions, right? Buying and fixing houses um, over my 10 plus years uh, doing that. But the issue is that I could have a lot more wealth created if I held on to the property. So it would have been a completely different story. Now, I'll end it with this because just recently um, I got in a, a conversation with one of our guys, young guy, right? Um, he's a, a millennial, 27 years old. Um, bought a property out of state. So he's all in about maybe $60,000. He bought it all cash. And he has it up on the market currently right now for sale. I want to say like hundred grand or something like that. And as well as uh, for sale, uh, for rent for 1100 bucks a month. All right now he has two applicants. And he asked me, he says, hey Jeff, what would you do with this particular uh, property? Would you sell it or would you actually uh, keep it? Right, and he shows me a, a text message that I guess maybe he asked someone else as well. And that person, the other person, basically says, Oh, yeah, no, flip it, right, to get thirty thousand dollars. So, so he's going to get his initial obviously capital investment of sixty thousand and some change plus thirty. So, he makes enough, you know, he gets a ninety thousand dollars right back. And he says, When he gets that, he's going to have liquid cash about maybe like two hundred and twenty five thousand. So, which is almost close to a quarter million dollars in cash a 27 year old is going to have. Okay, now that's not bad, right. Okay, having almost a quarter of a million dollars in cold hard cash as you know, not being 30 years old, that's not bad. And then keep in mind, this guy owns a house and as well as his house is being paid by his uh, roommates and stuff like that, right? So the guy is doing a lot of right things, okay? Now, my advice that I told him, okay, is I said, look, you got to get at least five to seven times net annual uh, income uh, if you're going to flip it. And preferably, I shoot for 10, right? If, if you're going to actually sell an asset that's giving you cash flow, right? Why are you going to sell it? Because the capitalization rate on this or the cap rate, okay? Now, I know that's kind of a, a real estate lingo, but let's just use a return, rate of return, okay? Is uh, um, based on his numbers, right? He's going to get about close to about 10% return on his money. That's actually pegged by real estate. So the question you have to ask is, where else can you get 10% cash on cash return? Every single year. And then you have a potential upside of uh, appreciation. And then also you have your depreciation credits that you can get as an investor, right? The tax benefit, okay? So that's the question you have to ask. And unfortunately, there isn't. So my suggestion was like, hey, what would you do? I was like, dude, just freaking hold on to it, right? And then take your $750 a month that you're gonna get and then uh, do mortgage acceleration on his principal residence and pay down his home, okay? Take that $750 that he's gonna get, right? Because his current rental property is gonna pay it off. And I say, use it to pay it down and then try to get that sucker paid off. Now, now there's two trains of thoughts on this and I'll end it with this as I finish up and uh, finish up this, right? is some investors believe that they'll say, hey, you know what, you should always be in debt, right? Because interest is right, you can write off interest, and especially interest rates are low right now, so why would you wanna pay anything off? You wanna be in massive amounts of debt um, and then hold on to assets. Now, I get that, but the challenge and issue when you have massive amounts of debt is this, is that when there are opportunities, right, like the correction that we had in 2008, even if you're in great equity position, okay, and if you have debt on it, that equity can, poof, disappear, right? Versus if it's paid off in cash, even if that equity disappears because the value comes down, then guess what? The sheer fact that you have assets on there, right, that's paid off, then you can go out and get lines of credit against it and go back in the market and then buy at a deep discount. 
All right, that's number one. And then we all know the old strategy of monopoly. To buy four houses and then turn those four houses into red hotel, right? All right, so that's the strategy of monopoly. And that's what I was telling him. I was just like, look, man, if you take your 750 and you multiply it by cash flow, net cash flow, $750 that you're getting on that asset, you multiply it by 12, then you know, you're know you getting about maybe four times your annual net cash flow, right? Pre-tax dollars, okay? Which came out to about like, I don't wanna say like 44,000 or something like that, right? Which is less than 5X your annual cash flow. So in that case, like, okay, why would you want to sell it, right? And I might as well hold on to it and then take the cash flow because you're getting 10% return on that every single year. And uh, as well as you get depreciation, as well as you got an upside with possible appreciation, even if it goes at a standard rate of 3%, it's going to keep on going, going up, going up. And then if it goes up to a certain point where you can get 10 times cash flow, maybe that's the time to actually sell it. And here's the reason why I say 10 years is because people talk about real estate cycles and depending on where you believe the real estate business is, right? There's two train of thoughts on this, right? The, the long-term debt cycle, as they like to call it, okay? And I'm going really, really deep in this, but there's something called a global 18-year debt cycle. Then they're talking about that's going to implode soon, all right? And the other one is the 18-year real estate cycle with Cato Institute. And then they have the short-term uh, real estate cycle, which is eight to 10 years. So the idea of why you should get at least 10 times annual earnings earning on a cash flow property and why that makes sense is because if the market turns or dips or down, it doesn't really matter for you because as long as you says, hey, you know, you're getting the money in, then if you get the cash and you sell it at a high point of 10x, then you can hold on to it. Even if you starts going up a little bit more, then at least you got 10 times. And then when it comes down, you can go back in and buy. All right, so, so those are the type of the advice that I gave. And uh, the reason why I wanted to make this is because I'm a firm believer in the next 12 to 18 months, you're gonna hear a lot more talks about the real estate industry as well as the equities market because we're at 21,000 in the Dow and then the real estate market is so hot. So I wanna, for anyone that's out there in internet land that's searching this, to be aware of net and gross and understand that, hey, it's cool to do capital growth because it's sexy, it really is, right? Versus cash flow, it's really not that sexy sexy, right? Which is the, hey, buy something, hold on to it, pay it down. And then once it's paid off, then guess what? You have an asset that's coming in income every single year that you can pass on to your kids, build that portfolio, right? And then if the time is right, then you can sell it off and then go into a bigger asset class, right? So again, not sexy, but it works because as they say, they ain't making more land, right? So that's what I got for you on this episode. I got to go into the office here, but understand again, the difference between net versus growth in real estate investing as well as understand what capital growth investor is versus cash flow investor. That's what I got for you. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Jeff Koga Live.